This is Why the Last Man podcast on TV Podcast Industries, and we're talking about Why the Last Man, Episode 9, Peppers. You took our only chance at bringing the world back, and you hid him away. I had no choice. He could have been killed. We're already a target. Powers. The selfishness. I did what I did to protect you, all of you. The future of the human race depends on his survival, and you sent him out there with one person? You weren't thinking about any of us. You wanted him all to yourself. He's my son. My sons are dead! Welcome back, fellow survivors, to our coverage and discussion on episode 9 of Why the Last Man, entitled Peppers. I am one of your hosts, John. I'm your other host, Derek. Yes, unfortunately, there is no rounding out of the group this week mm. with Chris. Uh, he is working crazy hours, and yes. by that I mean I think it's APAC or LATAM hours uh, with his job at the moment. So he's unable to be here with us to talk about peppers. Yeah, it might even be North American hours this week. I'm confused as to which ones he's working this time. But uh, yes, we'll have to be a very square group this week, just myself and John. Absolutely. And with <laughs> hours going forward and back, uh, yes, time zones are all over the place at the moment. But we are here, regular as clockwork, of course, uh, to give you Why the Last Man, the <laughs> penultimate episode, episode yeah. nine. I know, I know, second last episode of the series. But I suppose the good thing is, uh, without Chris this week, we're recording a little bit earlier than normal. So, um, so yeah, we're going to have the episode out a little bit earlier than we normally do, which is, uh, is kind of cool uh, to be closer to the US release of these episodes uh, for episode nine, the second last episode of the series. Um on fx on hulu yes and remember fellow survivors hashtag why lives on mm -hmm. to hopefully fingers crossed toes crossed arms crossed legs crossed eyes crossed uh <laughs> to get a season two of why the last man uh, at some other reputable uh and welcoming i guess platform at yeah. this stage yeah absolutely um, hope to hope to see the series continue there's a, a it's a 60 issue comic book series with a a full complete story in there we'd love if the show continued and was able to explore that full storyline and get to the end of the story of why the last man that would be awesome i'd love to see it continue and there's so much talent behind the scenes in here and in front of the camera uh that i i, I i'd be really surprised if someone doesn't pick it up well here we go Keep it crossed, yep. fellow survivors. But before we get into our spoiler-filled discussion of episode nine, uh, remember you can pop on over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com where you can subscribe to the podcast on any good or evil podcast player of your choice. Mm -hmm. Remember, please share the podcast, subscribe, rate us, leave a review if you want to, uh, because sharing the podcast is, of course, sharing the love. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's been great for everybody that's been sharing the Why the Last Man podcast throughout this series. Um, there's a ton of podcasts that are covering the show, but we've been getting some some great listenership uh, for this show, for our little show from Ireland as well. Uh, so uh, thanks so much to everybody that's been sharing it on social media and, uh, and sharing it on their own accounts as well. And a thank you to everybody that's been leaving their feedback and their thoughts about our podcast about the show as well. So thanks so much yeah and speaking of the the you know the great fellow survivors and all the other fellow podcast listeners uh, that mm -hmm. tune into our shows um you can send in any feedback on any of the shows that we cover to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com mm -hmm. we are over on facebook at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash tv podcast industries and of course we are the only shining light on twitter these days <laughs> with at tv pod industries uh, where you can join us as well. Yes. Twitter's a lovely place. It's a lovely place, especially when you see the, uh, the live uh, live tweeting of each of the episodes that the cast and crew are doing uh, each week for uh, for Why the Last Man. That's been great fun to go back and look at after we see the episodes as well. That is true. 
But let's get on with our discussion. Derek, what are some of the episode details? Uh, once again, based on the comic book series by Brian K. Vaughan and Pia Guerra, showrunner Liza Clark for the series. Uh, this episode was written by Katie Edgerton. We spoke about her before because she wrote episode three of the show, uh, entitled Neil, uh, and was also a writer's assistant on the TV show Halt and Catch Fire. Uh, the episode was directed by Cheryl Dunya, uh, who directed episode five of Lovecraft Country, one of our favorite shows. Oh, of absolutely. Last year. And unfortunately, another fantastic show that was ended before it's uh, before it's time ended after season one um a little bit different in that case because i covered the the novel uh lovecraft country which was just one contained story and it it, it covered it in, in its entirety in the first season of the show whereas in the case of well last man as i mentioned 60 issues and we're getting about the first 20 maybe maybe 12 to 20 being covered in this first season of why the last man but john do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for episode nine of why the last man entitled peppers sure While Yorick relaxes into the new community of former prison inmates with a happy Friday party, manicures and the weekly joint, both Agent 355 and Dr. Allison Mann are still cautious of their new surroundings. Feeling safe, Yorick begins to open up and trust Sonya, but Agent 355, still recovering from her concussion and with her persistent memory flashbacks, becomes wary of Sonya after she asks too many questions. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, at the Pentagon, tensions come to a head as Jennifer is publicly challenged by Regina Oliver and Kimberly about Yorick and Agent Bergman. With a loss of confidence in Jennifer by both her cabinet and the military, Regina looks to install herself as president just as a new threat emerges. Deep beneath the Pentagon, Beth and her fellow conspirators explode their way into the building, capturing and holding hostage the political leaders. As chaos breaks out inside and outside the Pentagon, Regina is executed by one of the insurgents. As the military fights back, Jennifer and Beth become separated from Christine and Kimberly as they look to survive the bullets and tear gas. Elsewhere, the newly formed Amazonians head out on the road for supplies. An attack on the Museum of Man, in memory of all the men that died in the event, shows up the differences between Nora and Roxanne. While Nora is annoyed that she is with children, destroying everything in their way, including food and water, Roxanne is frustrated that Nora is more interested in groceries than punishment. But in the aftermath of their attack, Nora, in an attempt to build bridges with Roxanne, agrees to her idea to track down possible male survivors that have been documented in the area by the museum. Their first mission is a sighting of a man close to a town with running water and electricity. There have been multiple sightings of this man, described as wearing a heavy raincoat with his face covered by a gas mask. Ooh, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> exactly. Just needed the monkey reference. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. I'm surprised there wasn't a uh, a monkey on his shoulder uh, as part of that that, that description. But uh, but we kind of get a uh, connection back um, to the fact that Liaric lost his mobile phone, the mobile phone that he was going to go back to that trading post for. And we see the mobile phone turn up again uh, with an image of Beth sitting on the front of it as well. So, uh, so that's quite an interesting little time. Yes, it is. Like we are in a penultimate epi- episode of the season, and we did mention it last week that we we're a little concerned we're going to get to the end of season one of this show, possibly the end of the series, and have a big kind of um, cliffhanger moment. What's interesting about this episode, I think, is how much of the story is starting to tie together a bit here. Uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, you know this is a three-parter, really, Mm -hmm. covering the Pentagon, the Amazonians, and Yorick 355, Alison Mann, and Ampersand um, on their respective journeys. Mm -hmm. Uh, And some of these journeys um, are are likely to come together uh, with this insistence by Roxanne that, you know, they should follow the leads to punish any potential surviving uh, men uh, from the the event that occurred the apocalyptic event but indeed even just we're in the pentagon with beth and jennifer mm-hmm. and, and beth hears that yorick is still alive as well exactly. so you know both from afar and um sort of in the same vicinity the, these storylines are coalescing nicely and i think that flashback to the lost phone uh was was really good you yeah, know because yeah. it it was you know at the time it it's Yorick 
more concerned about his lost phone, even though the person that's on it uh, may not even be alive um, Mm -hmm. and wasn't picking up. We see she had extracurricular activities, basically, um, has Beth in, mm-hmm. in terms of uh, sort of insurgency and, yeah, and con- conspiracy. <laughs> but it, it it's a nice little touchback, um, yeah. you know, to that Boston market um, that, that took place with him and 355. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You mentioned there are three main storylines here. We'll do our best uh, in our top moments to cover off all three storylines. But like Chris, it would have been a lot easier. Um, big difference this week, obviously, last week we had um the one storyline effectively all of roxanne's backstory all um focused around the uh, former price max which is now burnt down um and this week we're, we're back to the three storylines um yeah. separated out into the into the episode so john where do you want to take us with your top moment from this episode um i'm taking us really to the prison community um do you know i i just really like this it because you know, it's that moment to breathe where you get to see the the, the characters of Yorick 355 and, and Alison Mann. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, certainly Yorick is beginning to, you know, snuggle down uh, nicely into mm-hmm. sort of the embrace of this community. You know, it's a comforting armchair uh, with with a log fire roaring beside it on those cold winter nights. And, and I really like how that contrasted and and was also portrayed you know it contrasts with 355 saying you know just as she's about to be treated by the doctor don't trust anyone with yorick effectively simply seemingly not taking heed of that you know really sort of getting into the swing of this community he certainly formed you know a bond with um with sonia uh, who he woke up naked to on his you know his first day there Mm -hmm. but he's really embracing the happy effing saturday party Uh you know he is um he enjoys a, a nice manicure from Sonia mm-hmm. with coconut oil you know as they they have a, a a really interesting conversation and you know sh- don't tell Alison Mann but it's you know one joint per household for the week <laughs> and that he is excited to to begin uh taking a, a puff on yeah, so I, it, re- I really like that kind of comment yeah. where, where he's going you know don't tell her because she's a bit concerned about my sperm count uh, and obviously a, a joint is known to affect sperm count so don't tell her that i've had a joint because she may uh, give out to me afterwards uh something else i love about these moments with uh with yarek where he's kind of really settling into this community and as he said you know there's still that wariness with us and, and with uh 355 because this is a community of former prisoners no matter what that's they were put yeah. in prison for a reason, and there's uh, numerous conversations throughout this. Yet Yarek is completely settling in, just you know, getting up and dancing with the group to uh, the really ironic uh, TLC's "No Scrubs," which yeah. is a song about a man exactly like Yarek, a person who has no job, lives off his friends, borrows money from everybody else, yet hollers at a woman to go, "Why don't you come home with me?" And the band are effectively singing, and PLC are singing in the song, I would never go home with a scrub like you, basically. Yet Yarek is dancing there, hands in the air, how amazing it is, but doesn't realise it's about a man exactly like him, which I love. Um, great moments in here. It, it is. I, I love that um, Yarek says to 355, who he forces to get up and dance to mm-hmm. this, you know, is this our song? I love the awkwardness of 355. I loved her laughing at Yorick's kind of goofy dancing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was just really, uh, really nice. And, you know, at the same time, you know, whilst Yorick is getting comfortable with Sonia, um, you have w- what I call the, the, the peanut butter jello confrontation between <laughs> 355 and Sonia. Um, mainly because Sonia is asking questions of 355, who is you know, up exercising probably before the doctor recommended after Mm -hmm. the concussion. But also, you know, we see Agent 355 um, having more flashbacks to her recruitment at the hands of the Culpa Ring and being introduced to Agent 525 uh, called Fran Mm -hmm. uh, in what seems like an orphanage where she's um, been taken to. And of course... Sonia's questions are about that tracker device 
And she knows it's not Yorix. She knows it can only be her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she has that sense about her. Yeah. And I just thought it was, you know, really, really interesting. You know, a great moment where 355, you know, menacingly says to Sonia, can I get past there? As she takes this huge knife just to cut the crusts off the peanut butter jello sandwich. Uh-huh. And Sonia replying, Am I the sandwich? You know, <laughs> is this you? Is this what you want to do to me? Is this the metaphor? It, here? Exactly. I, get it. I love um, that Sonia's going, but I'm not intimidated by you. I can't. I, I would never be intimidated by a person like you. I've seen worse, kind of thing. To 355, who is uh, who is pretty intimidating to everybody around her, and Sonia's kind of going, "Nope, doesn't work on me. I've seen worse." Yeah, and <laughs> I I just thought that was. You know, it was just a nice little confrontation. Mm-hmm. It's also the suggestion that maybe she has some feelings, however much she wants to bury them for Yorick. Mm-hmm. And we see that awkwardness at the dance. Yeah. We see her then later destroying that tracker. Yes, she And um, so, again, whether that is her tracker or the tracker for that the person who recruits her is is another matter. So she took that from the house where she met the other member of the yes. copper ring. So it's a new tracker that she took with her. So I would say the expectation was that uh, Fran was her former trainer, the person that she went to the house to meet. She met the other Culper, me- Culper Ring member and then took this tracker with her, potentially thinking that Fran, or Agent 525, um, would be able to find her tracker at a later stage. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that if she would happen to be driving past this town, she'd go, oh, there's a Culper member, a member of the Culper Ring here. I'll pop in and see it. But the fact that she smashed it by the end of the episode, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what that means. And it's a, it's a bit difficult with 355's yeah, story, isn't it? Definitely. Because we're not getting all the pieces together. We're getting bits here and there. I presume we would have had it potentially wrapped up in maybe next episode. We'll get a bit more wrap up on it. Or maybe this is something that we're going to save for, for next season. But it is kind of interesting. Is this her committing fully to her mission now to protect Yarrick and Agent uh, Alison Mann in their next trip on to San Francisco whenever they they leave uh, this town or is this just I don't now want to meet up with Agent 525 as I remember more and more about how I was brought into the Culper Ring and how much was put on me I'm now severing ties with that yeah I'm wondering if which side it's on at the moment well it's that interesting flashback that we get um where Agent 525, Fran, says, you know, we're told work hard, follow the rules, and you'll do well. Uh, and she says, no, that's not the case. Um, you've just done a successful mission or and, and training. Mm-hmm. And it says, you know, you have to recognize this opportunity to get ahead in this world that the rules aren't designed for you. Mm-hmm. This is your opportunity. Yep. Where you can make something of yourself, even though the rules are stacked against you. This is the, the this is the the jar in the doorway that yep. allows you to become a part of that. And so maybe it's like you say, it's it's a different world with different rules now. Mm-hmm. So she this isn't what she needs. And um, so it, it's it's a, a really interesting point, which I think, you know, I guess might still need to be clearer uh, as time goes on. Yeah. Um, and I suspect that could be with a chance meeting with Fran at some point. Exactly, exactly. That would be really interesting. I presume we would be heading towards that meeting with Fran uh, in, in future. It was difficult to pick up her agent number, though, because we were looking at it with subtitles and the subtitles were changing from Fran to <laughs> to agent uh I think I think it actually might have been five three five because I remember thinking, <laughs> oh, um, three fifty five is our character that we're following, and she's agent five three five, which is the same numbers in a different order. I, I, and I remember thinking that at one point when I saw the the agent number on screen, but it was gone by so fast in the subtitles that I just just not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> and I had written down three two five, so yeah. yes, it could be. Any number from one to infinity. We know there's a five in there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, I I did really like as well um, when Sonia was was giving the the, the manicure and moisturizing his hands. You know, we we get a bit of an explanation as to what happened post the event yes. from Sonia, um, and uh, uh, you know that all the male prison guards died. All the female prison guards thought it was them that had done it and mm-hmm. then locked them, locked them in the prison 
and you know when they broke out the 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 female prison guards were so scared they you know she has this really nice way she describes it they forgot we were human you know they were trying to um uh kill them effectively Mm -hmm. and it was just a really nice search because you know yorick asks the question well how did you come about all of this you know this was someone's at some point so how is it now that you know you're here you know the assertion being that they came in and basically killed everyone or, Mm -hmm. or or something to that effect and you know maybe that's not directly answered by sonia here either but um, yeah, she very much says, you know, this is answering a question that they posed or they knew was going to come up um, a couple of episodes ago when when Yarick meets the, meets this uh, crew for the first time. They kind of go with the with them is going to come the question. How did you get these houses? How did you get rid of the prison guards? So you're right. Sonia gives an explanation for the fact that it was us versus them, basically. And they had treated us inhumanely by locking us back up in the prison. So. It was going to be us, but it is, is what Sonia says. She doesn't really get into why they have now got all of this entire town. As no, well. exactly. So that's a bit of a difference. So I don't know whether the town was just an add on, um, where the prison guards and their partners lived potentially. They live close to the prison. Yeah, maybe, it could be like it. Bourneville or Port Sunlight, you know, the, the, the towns that were created for the factory workers, mm-hmm. kind of, yep. you know, all that kind of stuff. It could, it been that, but could I, be something like that, but I guess yeah, not. I feel there may have been other people living in those homes as well. Yeah. Sonia doesn't want to shine the light on exactly what they did to get this entire community, this entire housing estate for themselves, effectively. So, um, so yes, yeah, you know, we as as we said earlier on, three fifty five and, and Alison Mann definitely still have that in the back of their minds at all times. These people were in prison for a reason. And there are some really interesting discussions. I love Yarick trying to be um sensitive about uh, about his description of the women who are in prison. You know, he talks about, you know, a lot of people are put away for the wrong reasons yeah. and people are put away in plea deals. I know this from my reading, you know. Um there's people put away because of racism, he whispers, and Alison Mann sl- slags him off for that as well. And then he kind of goes, Ah yeah, but you know, statistically speaking um women usually kill their <laughs> abusers don't they um Alison going oh statistics are going to be used here again uh, he's going women are less likely to start shit aren't they statistically speaking and he's surrounded by women who've been put in prison yeah. and Sonia responds directly to him on that and goes well I started some shit pretty much all of the women that are here started some shit and that's why we're here uh, statistics don't apply when you're in, when you're in a, re- a group surrounded by prisoners exactly that's and she says you know you're not the first person mm-hmm. to tell me about prison or you know how I went to prison or what I am why I'm in there, yep. what it's about, you know, she's, she's lived it and experienced it. And I guess this is her, her, you know, her extraction from it, from the, the event that happened. Exactly. And so, Whereas Yarek has read it and he's watched it on TV and maybe seen yeah. a few movies here and there or a documentary or two. So, uh, so yeah, don't tell her how prison works yeah. is, is what I love about it. This to me is probably, um, the most realized version we've seen of Yarick throughout the season because he's kind of in a relaxed situation here. And I feel like this character of Yarick is coming to the forefront uh, more than we've seen Definitely. in other episodes, I, I feel. Yeah, uh, throughout this episode. Definitely. And I think, you know, to all the um, possible uh, things that could have happened or taken place mm-hmm. in order for um, these former inmates to be where they are with a, a town with running water and with electricity, you know, Saturday, Friday and Saturday cookouts and, and celebrations, mm-hmm. all of this. Um, you know, this is just to, this is linking in to what we see in this episode of the Amazonians. So, you know, right at the end, um, you know, their attack on the Museum of Man and there is a survivor sightings sort of booth there where, uh, mm-hmm. women and can come and give their stories of possible sightings of men that survived oh, the, yeah. the male apocalypse effectively. And we we hear um, that Roxanne is, is wanting to kind of follow up on these. And one of the first ones that suggested, um, and I guess for Nora's point, she's so interested in groceries, as we see um, <laughs> in, in this episode. I do love when she says to Athena, don't touch the effing corn pops laura oh. and she's like my name is athena absolutely it's so 
<laughs> it's so well done. Um, I just loved it. Absolutely. I also love what's coming out here with this group, with the Daughters of the Amazon. You know, last week we had them being riled up by the speech that Nora kind of coaxed out of Roxanne to lead them. But she's turned them into this kind of frenzied mob, which is really important for this group. This idea that they're now going to do everything that Roxanne says because she says it. She's saying, you know, these people are worshipping a world that treated us badly, so we need to punish them. We are yeah. the result of that worship, effectively. And they all run in there and destroy water. They destroy food, knowing that they didn't have any food. Last week, they were fighting over the fact that the uh, the Price Max burnt down, which was their home, which contained food. This week, they're destroying all the water, pouring it out, destroying all the food, stabbing it, throwing it in the ground because they're in this frenzy. Because Roxanne has worked them up so much into this idea of punishing everybody that's there. Yet you have Nora kind of going, oh, not again. Look, can we yeah. just... Follow the ideas of Roxanne, but remember that we still have to come out of this with some more food to eat tonight. And that's the thing. You really get the sense here. You know, Nora is trying to exert that influence that she did in the last episode. Mm -hmm. You know, I am in the inner circle, she said. And yet, in a sense, um, you know, she's she's being rebuffed here by Roxanne. You know, she says, Roxanne says, are you inspired by grocery shopping, Nora? You know, Nora wants to just look after the children uh roxanne is get a bat or a gun in your hand and, and come uh, uh, into the fight with, with ourselves well yeah but that was part of the deal that nora made it's not even that she just wants to stay looking after the kids she knows information about roxanne that could destroy her leadership of this group as far as she's concerned she should be able to choose whatever she wants to do here but Roxanne exactly. is turning around to her and going, take this bat and follow us yeah. into battle. And she's doing it in front of everybody so that Nora can't say no. But there will be repercussions from this. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I really did um, get the sense from Nora here that she may, in a sense, do a, a coup of her own on this group. Absolutely. Um, that, you know... There's that look from Nora as Roxanne shouts, let's have fun. And that was mm-hmm. never the intention of what Nora was trying to instill in her. It was to make her a leader, exactly. for people to follow, for her to be in control, in charge of a new destiny. Because yeah. she's a political strategist and, a, and advisor mm-hmm. to the president. She knows all about how to create that um that story um you know that attractiveness to other people yeah. and, and the it, it's that moment she speaks to to hero after hero he is um that Roxanne has effectively told her most intimate secret mm-hmm. um of since the event that she murdered the the paramedic uh, boyfriend mm-hmm. that she was sleeping with and um, she's told that to all the other um girls and nora overhears this and again you know comes in with a story to to sort of break that ice with hero and she's you know last episode she was totally rebuffed this time hero certainly doesn't rebuff her and listens to it but it's just you know, Nora is quite clear. Don't tell Roxanne your secrets. She's not worthy of them. Absolutely. It's the use of worthy to me that, you know, with the throwaway comment of let's have fun when Nora is trying to get supplies mm-hmm. so that they survive, that they have shelter. Yeah. And um, that ultimately, I think Nora is coming to the conclusion Roxanne is simply not worthy of any of this absolutely Um, and she knows she's not because of the story that she said she knows she's not the person she said she was uh, and trumped herself up to be uh in in the same way um that she knows her own truth um, as to why they survived because they she was angry and she has become resourceful so I, i think she's beginning to see the differences between her and Roxanne. Absolutely. And that makes me slightly concerned for Roxanne that maybe not the hands of Nora, but some kind of 
political coup will happen and who best to do it than a former presidential advisor yeah i i feel it's probably going to be at the hands of nora but you're you're absolutely right it is it is really interesting isn't it because effectively you feel like nora has created a persona for roxanne that roxanne can use to lead the daughters of the amazon make them follow her keep them on side but also use it to get what she wants so from nora's perspective that's new lodgings new place to live and uh, food all the time, make sure they're back to where they were before. And Nora's using the story she's created for Roxanne to get there. Roxanne's using it to command her new army, effectively. And that's as far as her goals go. So if you feel like Nora's kind of going, oh, okay, I've completely overestimated where you want to take this. I thought you wanted to take this to the next level, be the new president of uh, of the outside world effectively outside of the pentagon thinking that you wanted to be a leader of this massive group of uh, of daughters of the amazon but actually all you want to do is cause disruption and call uh, an attack and fight and and create yeah. uh disarray and violence everywhere um but really interestingly again we see nora use another story in order to get hero on side she walked through the uh, the Hall of Voices, this place where all the voicemails were being left uh, by men of the past, um, this in in this museum of men, and she heard the story of a man calling somebody to ask whether it was green or yellow peppers that he wanted that that they wanted when he looked at the shopping list, and then Nora takes that story. The name of the episode is Peppers. She takes that story, yeah. relays it to Hero, and says it's about her husband. That her husband once called her and asked which type of peppers she wanted. And she was going, oh, just make a decision because I used to sweat the small stuff. You don't need to do that anymore in the, in this world. You need to be a better person, um, is what she's saying to, uh, to Hero. And it's all made up. It's another cover story from Nora. She's using something else in her environment to create this kind of shell around her for her new persona, whoever she's going to become now in the new apocalypse. So uh, another, another, um, great little insight into Nora for this episode. Well, that's it. And, and, you know, you get to hear, I am who I am. And I, you know, she says, I'm angry mm -hmm. uh, after the, the, the previous world of, you know, I had the husband, the children, mm -hmm. the house, the car, the job, the career, um, always looking for more. Yeah. Um, and I'm angry. But what I love about Nora is I don't know whether that's true or whether she exactly. was saying it to get on Hero's side because it feels very similar to what Roxanne was saying to Hero about you can be whoever you are in this in this new world. It doesn't matter who you were in the past. Whatever you want to take from that, you take from it. Whatever you want to leave behind, you leave behind. And it feels like Nora's coming up with a similar type of manipulation of Hero to try um, and get absolutely. her on Absolutely. It's the same as with you know agreeing to Roxanne's um, and I guess the Amazonian, the group's wishes to try and track um, these potential sightings of male survivors. Mm -hmm. Nora looks wholly unconvinced by it, but yeah. she still wants to maintain that close relationship with Roxanne and says, you know, I want to step up and do my bit and let's go and do this. But mm -hmm. interestingly, she picks the person that is close to a town with running water and electricity. Absolutely. Again, it's about the groceries. It's about the survival. It's mm -hmm. about those necessities. Yep. And it just so happens that it is Yorick. It is the, we see the phone from Boston there, as we talked about right at the start, yep. with Beth's picture on it. Absolutely. But with Beth's picture on it, not Yorick's picture. Yep. Remember, Nora was in instantly recognized Hero because she worked in uh, in the White House with her mother. She knew exactly who Hero was. She probably would have recognized Yarek if those drawings had been good of him, <laughs> but they're not exactly. really. They're just straggly haired man, basically. Uh, and or if she'd seen that photograph of of Yarek on the phone or the video of Yarek and Beth on the phone, she probably would have recognized who Yarek was. But she still doesn't know it's actually Yarek. No, uh, uh, absolutely no not. There. So really like that. But but you're right. The reason why she's going here is because uh, electricity, water, running water, a town that's working. Maybe I can get Roxanne and the group close to there on the investigation and maybe we can take over that town. Yeah. Maybe I, that can be our new base of operations. Exactly. But for Roxanne, it's we're going to hunt the remaining men. Yeah. It, it, it's almost <laughs> counter to what Nora was saying uh, last week about, 
you're put pitching them against men and they no longer exist. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't believe these sightings are real, mm-hmm. that maybe it is someone who's transgender who's just been mistaken, mm-hmm. um, or it's just the the mindset. Yes. They want to see their love, former loved ones but in, that, all, in other yeah. things. But that in itself is a massive worry if they're now going yeah. to hunt down um, people like Sam, um, transgender men who are out in the world. If they're now going to hunt down every transgender yeah. man because they don't fit to Roxanne's definition of who should still be alive in this world. That's also really concerning if that's the way uh, Roxanne's group are going to go now. But there were signs of it all the way throughout Sam being in Definitely. Her presence, so. But it, it, it leaves a lovely juiciness mm. uh, in the mouth for the final episode mm-hmm. um, because, yes, the Amazonians can rampage to the Museum of Man. Yeah. But quite how will they rampage with a group of former inmates um, who I suspect might be a little uh, tougher to crack? Yeah. Um, but And also the potential for the meeting of Hero and Yorick, even with Nora recognizing who it is, realizing yeah. not only does she now have the the queen of diamonds but she's got the king of diamonds maybe yeah you know whatever that this is a bargaining chip or you know again i i I, with nora um it's really fascinating what's what motivates her in in a sense that was the same with roxanne but that's been blown apart from the backstory Uh, and you're beginning to see the more infantile aspects of roxanne here Mm -hmm. and certainly that is what Nora is seeing. Yeah, you feel like Roxanne's just there to be in control, but no major plan there. Um, but we did mention last week, you know, and it's kind of interesting, it's playing into this week's episode, we did mention, I wonder how much of that manipulation of Roxanne as to whether Yarek was actually a good person and actually a friend to uh, to his sister, Hero, whether that will have had an impact on Hero if they do meet uh, next exactly. week. Will, will yep. there be a standoff really between the two when she finds out her brother's alive? Um very interesting uh, tying those two together, John. Well done. Why, thank you, sir. <laughs> Derek, what is your favourite top moment? You... I think I can guess this one. Yes, Would yes. it happen to be in the Pentagon? It certainly is. <laughs> um, yeah, some moments uh, to cheer and some moments um, that were uh, pretty uh, interesting as they were being built up. Um, but overall, I'm calling this panic in the Pentagon for for many reasons. You know, we, we have... A lovely moment between uh, Christine and, and Jennifer, the president, where Christine finally breaks down and says, I'm pregnant. Yeah. Um, I'm, and she's really sorry, is effectively what she's telling Jennifer. But Jennifer's just telling her to calm down. Don't worry. No need to be sorry. Uh, no issues with you being pregnant at all. I'm glad you're telling me because she knows how scary this time is. She knows how scary it is to be pregnant with your first child. I love that we get a little touch to the relationship between Jennifer and Hero, where she goes, no matter how bad it went with uh, with Hero, she was still one of the greatest things I've ever created in my life, you know? Um, so in Jennifer's mind, there is still that barrier between herself and, and her daughter that Hero's talked about a few times, but she's still accepting that that's her daughter and that's the best thing she ever created. And they have that little moan between Christine and Jennifer. But that moment doesn't last very long because there's a coup going on uh, in the background, which we knew was coming from uh, from the realization that Yarek's still alive. We knew that Kimberly and Regina were going to take the information they had about Yarek being alive and use it to take down the president and put Regina in the position. I suppose what's interesting is seeing Kimberly being so standoffish at the beginning. She's yeah. lost her mother, so of course there's a big impact on her, but she seems really angry, like really really angry about what's happened and knowing that it's Jennifer's fault because of her making her mother feel like she was insane, um, effectively, as, as she says. So when the confrontation does happen with Jennifer, um, backed up by the military, backed up by General Reed, who we've seen throughout the series, uh, on the side of Jennifer, now switching over to the other side because she feels like her um, pilots were killed on the orders of the former president, which means she's given up her position as president by doing that. And then also the rest of the people that supported Jennifer finding out that her son's alive, feeling that Jennifer should have told them because in the past, in all of those presidencies that you said you would be better than 
this is exactly the kind of thing that they've said in the past. Oh, I kept that information to myself because it's safer. Um, you know, uh, the, I, I love that kind yeah. of confrontation between those groups that are in there. But then, you know, once Regina starts to wiggle her way in there going, okay, right, put her under arm guard. I'm now going to become president. You suddenly see the reaction from all the rest of Jennifer's team going, well, hang on a second. That's not exactly what we, what we wanted. Maybe one of us should take over from Jennifer uh, instead of you. Uh, I, I love that kind of realization that, oh God, better the devil you know, I suppose. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I, I loved how Jennifer's cabinet effectively turn on her mm. but then as soon as the replacement is putting herself forward in regina oliver it's like hang on and it, it's almost a bit like you know th this power squabble uh sort of breaks out be be between these two groups and that's understandable and it's yeah i, I love this coup uh detat really uh from regina and, and uh kimberly mm -hmm. and i have to say kimberly's face of triumph just with the sort of the tired eyes um was just magnificent it was both a smile and absolute disdain for for Jennifer mm -hmm. written across her face. I thought it 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 was pulled out so so nicely. Yeah, I like that. You know, they had managed to to get the 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 military on board. General Reed. I love the fact that it's Peggy Reed. Um, mm -hmm. just General Peggy Reed. What a, what a great name for a leader <laughs> of military. Absolutely. Um. I, like, I just, like, uh, like Peggy Carter. Exactly. Yeah, talked about before Captain you know, and, and her <laughs> rationale, you know, she's actually quite level about it. You know, mm -hmm. two of my pilots are dead, which she th feels is on her orders, even yeah. though Jennifer counters all of this. You know, Jennifer is constantly saying, well, what would you do? You know, mm -hmm. she says, I wanted to keep the circle uh, small. And one of her, you know, advisors in the cabinet is, well, you can't have a circle with just one person. Absolutely. You know, Jennifer's trying to protect Christine. All, all of this is, 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 you know, it's it's like House of Cards in, in a, a, a quick flash. It's mm -hmm. really quick. Um, and I, I thought it was really, uh, really well done. And, and certain But Jennifer plays all sides of these arguments as well. You know, when, when Regina puts herself forward for to become president, you get this great comeback from Jennifer going, this woman has concerns over fluoride. She's not a serious <laughs> person. She's not a serious contender for this position. Then she tries to play it that she was protecting everybody because if anybody found out, then the whole uh, Pentagon would be uh, attacked by everybody that was outside the fences. Then she tries to say, but I'm a mother and I was protecting my son um and kimberly comes back with just that stunning cutoff of but my sons are dead you don't have any right here to say that he's your son and you have the only right over him he is the last man alive and we needed him here you set him out into the world with just one person protecting him you know um, so i love the kind of counter attacks between yeah. really kimberly and jennifer they are the the two uh, I, I don't know whether level head is the right word for Kimberly, but the the people who know their arguments best of the group here. Absolutely. Regina's argument is just, I want to be president, and so I should be. Yeah, and, and <laughs> Re Regina actually is in a place of, uh, it's a little bit of limbo, really, because, you, you know, she orders that they go into protective custody, but then you have the explosion uh, rock the Pentagon from yes, Beth and her, um, her group, uh, forcing their way into the pentagon through an underground kind of access route uh, metro route that's been yeah. blocked up so she's not quite been um ordained in this role mm -hmm. but she feels as though she has and she's saying stuff where kimberly is like stop saying that you know i'm, I'm trying to make you appear um fit for this office yeah. I, i'm i'm trying to change people's opinions of you and yeah. perceptions and you saying all this stuff ain't helping exactly. here exactly. Uh, and i thought that you know so she's i feel even though regina in her mind is now i'm president it's not really guaranteed because you got the the, the retort of jennifer's former cabinet that, that says hang on a minute yeah. and she starts really saying other things that that really aren't very presidential in comparison to jennifer oh absolutely you know she holds herself in a completely different way yeah as we kind of said earlier on in the season it's very much i should be president because i should be 
And that's kind of it. That's her the end of her argument. And she was going to do anything to get there. You know, we even had it when <laughs> when General Reed says that uh, Jennifer is no longer uh, fit, for, doesn't have the right to lead anymore. Um, she kind of walks out of the room going, uh, thank you, Madam Con- Congresswoman. And she stopped by Regina going, Oh, well, you might as well, as well say, Madam President, because that's what I'm going to be in half an hour. There's no, there's no question over this now. In Regina's mind, she is president. Yeah, and she takes that as uh, to the, the to the furthest depths you can go. There's a negotiation going on when Beth and the whole uh, group of the insurgents come in to take over the Pentagon, and they want the president to tell them where all the stuff that they're there for are. You know, there, there's a hostage negotiation going on. The president is supposed to be giving them all the information of the that they have, all of the food reserves that they have, the weapons reserves that they have, which Jennifer will know where they are because Jennifer has been responsible for all of that. And Regina's standing up going, oh, don't even listen to her. She's no longer president. I'll I'll be the one to deal with. I'll make the deals with you. Yet one of Jennifer's cabinet is effectively saying, you don't even know where this stuff is. How could you possibly make the deals? What Jennifer's saying and what she's trying to negotiate here is get everybody else out. Keep me and I'll be able to deal with you and I'll be able to give you everything that you need once everybody else is safe. Regina's just simply going, deal with me because I'm president, even though she has no idea how to deal with any of this stuff at all. She's never supposed to have been in this position. And now that she is, she wants all of the power, but has no idea of the responsibility that comes with it. Exactly. I I love even that one of the insurgents, I think uh, her name's Malika, Mm -hmm. is, can you just make up your mind? You know, who am I to deal with? Who... Who is the president? Um, and again, Regina, as, as you know, they've been taken hostage in the war room, but the the outsiders turn to chaos because the people at the gates are coming through um, and attacking the Pentagon after hearing the explosion. Mm-hmm. Another explosion has rocked all the power lines to to the Pentagon, yeah. and you you have in that war room again um, were. It's just Regina is at everyone uh, to the point where, as they're being escorted out of that war room, R- Regina attacks everyone that's there. Yeah. Um, including Kimberly. I don't think she's exempt from it. You know, mm-hmm. that you're just all liberal um, people. I'm, I, you know, I'm the person that embodies America. I'm the one that should be leading here. Again, it's just purely power and ideology that is uh dictating what regina does yeah. and, and says and just the escalation of this confusion and the panic that's going on you know as I, as I mentioned the reason why i called my point panic in the pentagon is really because it started out with that initial panic of christine saying that she's pregnant to the president then the panic of jennifer that she's going to lose her role and that everybody knows about yark being alive and then the panic sets in truly for these insurgents when they can't work out who the leader is so that they can deal with this seemingly simple situation. Beth said it's like looking back in time when you go inside the Pentagon because they have running water and electricity and they have all the food they need. So they obviously felt this job was going to be a lot easier than it was and walked in on a coup going on between the president and another presidential candidate who the military say is in charge effectively. And then Regina throws the bomb in there herself she starts talking about a fictional man that's alive, the daughter of Jennifer, a conversation that when had amongst that group of women in the Pentagon yeah. could have led to her becoming president, now leads to her being shot by the insurgents, now leads to her being shot in the head yeah. by by Malika, the leader of this insurgency group. And effectively, she's going, we just might as well execute all of them, end the government as is. And that will insert real change. Yeah. And you can see the reaction from Beth and some of the other members of the team who didn't realize this is exactly what they were there to do. You know, everything has just become a panic and has just fallen apart very quickly in, in you know, in a matter of, of a couple of minutes, really. Well, well that's it. And, and you know, it, 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 that whole idea of, you know, you want real change as Malika poses that hypothetical question. Mm. I, I love the fact as well that, you know, she is sick with what she's done, the the shock oh, yeah. of having just done a headshot to Regina mm-hmm. Oliver, who is still, you know, um shaking on the floor. Um that yeah. I love seeing that moment where she um from the shock, the adrenaline, all of that that she's just done, she throws up, but she says, You want real change. And 
earlier that, you know, there is the chit chat amongst this group of a broken system and they walk in effectively into a broken system because there is a coup happening. Exactly. There is no one who is leading or in charge, even though Jennifer could do that more successfully than Regina because it's the competing power interests of power brokers. Yeah. And that's what they walk into. And so Absolutely. Malika's kind of challenge to everyone is we said that it was a broken system. This is why we've done what we've done. Mm -hmm. So if you now want real change, and it, in some ways it links with the the idea of what Fran says to Agent 355 as well about, you know, this is not your world. It's not designed for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same way that for these women, the world was never designed for them to be of any great influence other than in their immediate sphere you know and and this is their chance to put that right 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 yeah yeah that's an interesting point um, yeah. and and it's just really really interesting mm -hmm. i think yeah um but of course you know the context of all this is that all hell is breaking loose mm -hmm. now because you've got all the protesters at the front of the gates charging in yeah you've had these insurgents doing a tactical strike mm -hmm. and now the military is beginning to sort of fight back you know yeah sort of get some kind of grip on what to do what what and and how to do it and there's so there's so much going on in in these scenes here that like we see a member of jennifer's cabinet standing up and saying i'm with the president i'm with jennifer brown and getting shot for it um and i don't know whether that's because the military were encouraged to be on the side of regina so putting your hands up and saying i'm on the side of the president does that mean oh you're against us or was it one of the other insurgents that shot her in crossfire or something like that but there's so many so much going on and in between it all we get this great interesting pairing of groups splitting off we yeah. have uh beth who was with the insurgents and then her yorick was alive now going off with effectively her possible mother-in-law if if, if Yarek and herself had stayed together let's say uh, someone that she knew beforehand who's so going off with the president in one way and then we have Kimberly going off with Christine um so I kind of intimated earlier on in the season that that was something that she was grooming Christine to become more connected to her thinking that there was going to be much more in the political side um but now we've effectively got Kimberly and Christine going off uh, together I don't think that's from choice. I think it's the way, I guess, the the waves parted here. You would say that, but I, I, I kind of feel that it is the protectiveness of Kimberly towards Agreed. pregnant Christine that made Kimberly attach herself to Christine. But and it's then not we the choice it. of Christine, though. It certainly isn't, no. <laughs> and that's, that's why I think it's yeah. interesting. But Kimberly makes herself um, very important to Christine very quickly as she uh, she is attacked by somebody who's spray painting the walls of the Pentagon She's attacked, and effectively, once this person swings a, a an axe towards Kimberly and Christine, she's taken out by Kimberly with uh, using her uh, her nail file that she that she had on a person from earlier on, and she's killed. Uh, Kimberly has killed a person to save Christine, effectively. So, um, so that that's an interesting scene. I'd love to know if we knew this person that attacked yeah, them because that... in the in the uh, credits they're just seen as i think it's pickaxe uh, is the name of the character and uh, but kimberly seems to recognize yeah them. no that's the thing it, it's uh, that was a little unclear whether mm. the she was an insurgent who just happened to know kimberly because mm -hmm. she would be recognizable possibly from you know her dad's presidency days yeah um but kimberly uh, seems to know her as well now i know but exactly you're in washington so it's possible that the, that the insurgents were from the washington area and there's some kind of backstory between them but because the person's name wasn't even given in the closing credits it was given as pickaxe um I'm, I'm i'm leading on the side of this is something that we may see come back to kimberly in the future that she'll remember yeah. the person that she killed and her connection with her, and we'll see that in flashback, potentially. And it, it's interesting with the other pairing, because, I, I, firstly, I love the moment Jennifer recognises Beth um, through the the eye holes of the balaclava that she's wearing. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was really so, so well done. Absolutely. But it's and, also... And the moment Christine recognises yeah. Beth as well. <laughs> but it's also the fact that the president is with 
one of the insurgents. Mm -hmm. Anne has been released, so her hands are free, and Beth has just given her the coat Mm -hmm. that, that, that she was wearing. Now, that might not mean so much, but I'm wondering why... You know, the one of the war cabinet um, l- members, you know, she came out with her arms up saying she was bound, she was with the president, maybe the military fighting back, knowing that there was going to be the removal of Jennifer, believe that Jennifer has instigated this um, this fight back or right, attack. Yeah. That, and that, that in that a would, sense, it's a counter coup. And yeah. that's why she was shot because she was a member of Jennifer's team. Yeah, that but, would explain my question from earlier on. Yeah, that, that would answer it. Yeah, yeah. But as you say, with everything going on, um, it's just who shot who. I think it was the military shooting her rather than a member of the insurgency. Mm. But ultimately, it is chaos and how all these pieces will land. Yeah. At what will be the, the spin from. Kimberly as to what happened mm-hmm. uh, and, and so on yeah. uh, then it'll be interesting because you know Jennifer is in a very precarious situation Certainly here and um, given that the military backed Regina and um and Kimberly and Regina is now dead Absolutely. And the insurgents possibly seem to be backing Jennifer because <laughs> they're keeping her uh, with them but also reiterated earlier on in this episode is that Jennifer has a, a kind of idea of what state, at least, her son is in. Um, and she has just told Beth that Yarick's alive. So, yeah. um, so while we know for definite Nora is pushing the daughters of the Amazon to, uh, to go after Yarick in this, uh, near this community, or at least the sightings of a man near this community, we also now know that Beth is aware that, uh, Yarick is alive. The president is aware roughly where he is. So potentially they're also, um, could be going out there. Where else is Jennifer going to go? It seems like the Pentagon has fallen. Um, yeah. the military don't, weren't considering her the person in charge. They were considering she would be someone that they put under arrest for the murder of two pilots effectively. So, uh, I can't imagine Jennifer going back to trying to govern or trying to lead, uh, in here. So will Jennifer and Beth go off on a road trip themselves to, to go and find Yarick as well? Quite possible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But uh, very interesting to see. There are a lot of things coming together and a lot of possibilities as to how that can spin out, Mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Yeah. Just one more episode left in the season to find out how uh, how it does play out and how how the season wraps up. But this was an exciting episode where loads of stuff um kind of came to a head much more than I thought they were going to, especially one particular bullet to uh to Regina. Uh really wasn't Yeah, I wasn't that. expecting that at all, yeah. I have to say. Yeah. Brilliantly filmed, um came as a complete shock and uh and a surprise as to that happening, because that happens to a different character in the comic books. Um which I'm not going to spoil, uh, cause I know everybody's going to go out and read the comics, uh, straight away after, uh, after this series ends. Uh, so go read the comics, check it out. There is another character that has this ending and it's, uh, it wasn't Regina. So, uh, so it was a big surprise to get this ending. So, uh, lots of interesting stuff to come in the series, uh, with this, with this, the changes from the comics and the storyline that they're going for. So, um, overall though, that's, that was my point, the Panic in the Pentagon. I think, John, you took uh, Prison Community and the Amazon. So I think that's our three, uh, major points from the episode. Any, any notes? Yeah, there's no notes, uh, from me. Um, what about yourself, Derek? I, I just one quick one. I did just want to point out that, uh, nails are very important in this episode. Uh, we do have the pedicure of, uh, of Yarrick and we have the, uh, the, Nail file, um, anger of, uh, of Kimberly turned into a, uh, a murder weapon, uh, towards the end of the episode. So nails are very important uh, to this episode, which I thought was quite fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, the one thing I do want to mention is Carla's summer clothes that Alison uses to go and see <laughs> Dominique. Um, that I love just the, the t shirt. I also like the fact that Alison is both kind of going on a recon and intel mission uh-huh. to see but there could be um an outside chance of getting laid by dominique after absolutely uh, you know a- after their kind of little sort of aggressive meeting at the um at the the saturday party yeah absolutely i love that the the way she tries to introduce herself is do you like him as well <laughs> 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 i thought that was really funny um 
I'm glad you mentioned Alison, actually, because Alison uh, does reveal another little connection to a question from earlier on in the season. We see that Alison has some scars yes. on her stomach and that because the kind of experimentation she was doing with cloning, uh, some of it not so legal, um, that she had to be the only participant in some of those experiments. Um, so that could explain the crib that she had in her apartment um, when Yark and 355 went to see it. Um, she says she has no kids, but did she at some point? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so interesting that they're layering that in. So much being answered in these last few episodes, which I think is interesting, given that they didn't know whether they were getting a season two. And um, they're trying to kind of close off threads from this episode and just kind of leave the big open storylines, I would say, for season two. What is the future of this planet with no mammals with the Y chromosome? What, what is uh, what is that? About? Exactly. So, yeah. it, it, it's it's pulling together the first act setting up for the second exactly. act, ultimately, exactly. on a seasonal scale, yeah. effectively. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Derek, um, what did you think overall uh, of episode nine, Peppers? I loved this episode. Um, it was peppered with really interesting storylines. Oh, see what you did there? Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I feel embarrassed uh, by myself there. <laughs> but no, I really did enjoy this episode. I thought it was uh, full of really interesting stories, so much exciting um, build up to the finale of, of season one, hopefully not of the series. Um, it was just really interesting to see all the things pay off and, and some storylines starting to come towards a head and, and potentially our, our finale. Um, things that I didn't expect to happen. You know, I, I kind of thought they would keep all three of these storylines separate. I thought there was the coup that was going on between Jennifer and Regina. I kind of thought that was going to be how the season would end that potentially Regina takes over and, and Jennifer is put on the out. So I wasn't really expecting this entire uh, end of the Pentagon um, and end of the, of the government and end of the leadership. No. You know, how will that play out in the world? Overall, we've already seen communications are down. We've already seen that uh, people are drawing pictures and listening to old voice messages. And they're, th- that's all breaking down yeah. in itself. And society overall is breaking down. But once the government are gone, so they can't dispatch, um, the bigger fixes that have allowed some parts of society probably live on a little bit easier than other parts of society. Once that's gone completely, well, I presume society breaks down even more. So that's going to be really interesting to see if we get to that uh, in here. So lots of interesting kind of set up for what could potentially happen in the future and some great tying up of the overall storyline in this episode. So a really good one. What about yourself, John? Yet, despite the episode being called Peppers, I would give this four fried sad tomatoes out of five. Oh, the grey ones. Yes, the grey ones <laughs> uh, that is, are being um, sort of dished out in, in the Pentagon. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I fancy those. I guess they must be tinned tomatoes. Well, yes, exactly. To Christine's point, isn't she saying, I just want anything fresh, even if it's those fried sad tomatoes yeah. uh, that, that we got. Yes. <laughs> Before the five, that's pretty good for the penultimate episode oh definitely i like i really liked how this drew a lot of these different um areas together mm-hmm. i really enjoyed um the the the, the prison town and, and seeing 355 yorick and uh allison man uh in in that community and mm-hmm. um, it you know i like that the danger here um, you know, we all thought it would be coming from the military, um, when the, the leader of the former prison inmates, uh, you know, was, was being sort of questioned about, well, these people are on potentially on the run. So who is it that's going to come for them? We thought it was the military. It's more than likely going to be the Amazonians now, which provides a very different kind of Absolutely. sort of face off that could happen uh, in, in the final episode, which mm-hmm. I like. Again, absolutely loving Marin Island as Nora. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love everything about this complex woman. Um, and the, the look of disdain, the anger towards the Amazonians, um, in particular to Laura, aka Athena, mm-hmm. um, because of her de- willful destruction of corn pops. <laughs> uh, it was just really, really good. And as I say, I, I do wonder, uh, about whether Roxanne will survive Nora or whether, you know, having seen one coup, um, in, in this week's episode, potentially, uh, another coup is around the corner, uh, with the Amazonians. Mm. I, and again, the, 
the tension in, in the Pentagon. I thought it was really good. I think some of the scenes there, it just got a little bit confusing as to what was happening. Um, and I think the only thing I would have liked to have seen is more of the after effects of and aftershocks on Kimberly from the death of her mother uh, and just that that building of tension i think because we had an episode away from the mm -hmm. um you know you've just got to remind yourself of absolutely how sort of crescendo making it was in in terms of that tension between them mainly because i think amber tamblin uh is so so good uh, and certainly when playing um you know that role uh and butting off Diane Lane as Jennifer, oh, you know, that face of triumph from Kimberly, um, you know, tired, sad, upset, but both a smile and um, utter resentment um, yeah. to, to Jennifer w was great. And I would have liked to have seen a bit more of that. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. you know, it's the penultimate episode. They're bringing it together. I think they did it really successfully. So, um, you know, there's a lot of intrigue here for what, episode 10 will uh, deliver here yeah um, but you're totally right amber tamblin uh jennifer wigmore and um diane lane in these scenes are just fantastic together but i think amber tamblin because we've seen this kind of manipulating side of her and the confident side of her we've now seen her kind of fall apart a bit um in this episode but you're right that kind of mix of triumph and disdain that she has for uh for jennifer after winning the battle almost just before the bombs go off and everything kind of slips through her fingers. Yeah. Um, it, it's fantastic. I've, I've loved, uh, Kimberly throughout this season. It's, she's been a really interesting character. Um, and yes, to see the end of Regina in the episode in such a stunning way yeah. as well, uh, was a, a little bit of a fist pump, uh, in the air and, uh, and also a major shock. <laughs> yeah. Total, uh, total shock, uh, that, that death and execution of Regina. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, for, Fried sad tomatoes uh, out of five. Obviously, a little nod to the movie Fried Green Tomatoes. Of course, of course. <laughs> I guess um, I can. I can't say the movie without saying tomatoes rather than tomatoes. Of course, yes. Um, yes. So because you have to have them at the Whistle Stop Cafe. Yes, yes exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but I think with that, let us move on to our feedback mm -hmm. for. Why the Last Man? Absolutely, yes. We have some feedback over on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV Podcast Industries. Uh, we got some feedback on episode eight from Dr. Bob Phillips, who says, As always, you show me new elements and things I've missed from the episodes. I never saw Roxanne's connection with Law and Order being the source of her backstory. Well, I, caught, I got caught sideways by that storyline. Hadn't thought at all that there was a lie at the core, core of the Amazons. Really loved the development of the storyline, particularly the three kill summary from first blood to one shot. Sam's spur with the real, realization that he had to leave was beautiful. Yeah. To arrive in the hall of the Mountain King with such a magnificent head teacher was chef's kiss. I don't do chef's kiss as much justice as Chris does, do I? Mwah. Yeah, there we go. Yes, um, yes. Hold the Mountain King, the uh, the tune that uh, Sam was playing on the uh, on the piano when he arrived into the school. Uh, a great moment. I thought that was really. Uh, it felt. It felt like a beautiful moment. It really like he was, was. He was yeah. almost home, even though he'd only just met the principal uh, in that moment. Yeah, it it really was. Um, and yeah, the the law and order element to the backstory of Roxanne is it, just a really nice touch. Absolutely. I I hadn't even kind of thought of that until it was mentioned um you know by one of my fellow podcast yeah. hosts derek it may have been me i don't i don't remember uh, uh whether i had made that direct connection with uh with law and order and that uh that rising up through the ranks of roxanne from um being an assistant manager to fictional police officer uh but that's clearly where she learned all of the skills that she had <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I think about it and, and the moves exactly <laughs> uh and it just the fact she plays them in, in that you know, telly way. Yeah. Um, it is just really, really good. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Bob. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. We have another piece of feedback through email from Victor Sellers. Greetings, survivors. Well, there is nothing like a disaster to bring people together, but not in this case. Stupidity sure ran amok in this episode. Mm -hmm. The anarchists' Pentagon siege was a mess. They fell apart when the real soldiers got organized. The shooting of Regina took me by surprise. 
a regrettable loss of life. Mm -hmm. I laughed out loud when the shooter puked, then turned right around and started talking and barking orders. Please. Can Jennifer really trust Beth, even though she saved her? The Hero Y reunion may not go well. The Amazon wannabes will meet their match, and in some cases their maker in Marisville. Mm. They will face hardened former inmates, plus 355. Nora was right about being surrounded by children. Mm -hmm. Victor continues, I am hopeful the series producers find a new platform for the series. Perhaps Amazon will pick them up. I'm eager to watch this story play out and learn 355's backstory. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I'll finish the comics, which are also very thought-provoking and well done. Keep the faith survivors, Victor Von Doom. Thanks so much, Victor. Um, yes, the Nora uh, certainly was right uh, about uh, being surrounded by children. Yeah. And I think you might be right that uh, when the Amazonians uh, head to Marisville, where the prison inmates are, mm -hmm. um, that certainly, yes, they're going to meet a very different bunch of, of women uh, than they did at the Museum of Men. And certainly uh, they will, I, I guess a few of them are going to meet their maker uh, for, for sure. I'd say they will. And thanks, Victor, as well, for, for catching Marisville as the name of the town where the uh, where the former inmates are living. Because for some reason, I just didn't take it down in my notes. So uh, Thanks very much for that as well. And I definitely agree. Yeah, the whole coup d'etat and then coup d'etat from the uh, the anarchists uh -huh. plus the counter coup and everything. It was all anarchy in the Pentagon. Just, uh, just the infighting among, amongst the politicians. Mm -hmm. The, the attack by Regina just before she gets shot uh, on the White House and um, the Washington elite yeah. uh, back at them. You know, I guess when power is involved, things can crumble pretty quickly. Especially when uh, you have someone as crazy as, uh, as Regina in the middle of that. Well, of and, that too. <laughs> and yeah. everything else and going on. The, exactly. the gates being stormed at the front, the explosion uh, deep under the Pentagon to get in by the anarchists. So, like, there was... Uh, a lot of chaos there for sure. Absolutely. And yes, Victor, we are keeping the faith that the show will be picked up by another platform. I'm just not too sure whether it's Amazon. I think, uh, as we said uh, last week, I think HBO Max would be the likely place for it to go. But it, there really hasn't been this situation before where a show has been dropped by FX in its first season. And part of the reason probably is because of that connection now at Disney and it, it being a new channel. Um on there, this FX on Hulu thing is, uh, is very new uh, out there, so we don't really know what could happen. But there seems like there's loads of story to tell. And this, again, it just needs the right person high enough up in the chain in whatever company wants to buy it that is interested in a story like Why the Last Man. Because as you say, you're in the comic books, it is a really thought-provoking -provo story and has got lots of fans out there. So, uh, so hopefully this isn't the last we see of it when it gets to the finale next week. Yes, Keep the faith and mm -hmm. hashtag why oh, lives on. Lives on. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks so much, Victor. Yeah. Thanks, Victor. Thanks to everyone who sent in their thoughts about Why the Last Man this season up to our penultimate episode. If you want to get any thoughts to us in about the show, you can email us as always to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or join us over at our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries. Or you can find us on Twitter at TV pod industries. Yes, indeed. And of course, please subscribe to the podcast. Uh, rate us, leave a review, share the podcast, because sharing the podcast is, of course, sharing the love. We are also over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash TV Podcast Industries or on Buy Me a Coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash TVPI. Mm -hmm. Any support from our fellow survivors and fellow podcast listeners uh, is so very much appreciated by us here uh, on TV Podcast Industries uh, and really um, uh, we're very, very grateful Absolutely. for the feedback, the support, but we have one episode left of mm -hmm. Why the Last Man Season 1 and we will be back next week for episode 10 entitled Victoria. I know. A name or is it a cake? <laughs> it's definitely a name. And it certainly is. If you've read the comics, that name uh, may be very familiar to you. I really want to like do a comic book talk section like I used to do in the Walking Dead cast, John, uh, where we just talk about what that name could mean and what it could possibly indicate for next week's episode. But since it's only one week to wait, 
I don't want to spoil anything for a possible reveal that I think is in that name. Uh, you'll see next week if I'm if I'm right. We'll talk about it all fair and we won't spoil our fellow survivors. Absolutely no spoiling <laughs> at all. Don't I think it. it might play into one of my theories uh, in from this episode that I have embedded into um, into this uh, podcast. It may very well, but saying anything more might uh, spoil it for our fellow survivors. So we're it, not going to do that. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back next time with our discussion about the finale of Why the Last Man. Yeah. Thanks so much, fellow survivors, for joining us. As always... It really is a pleasure uh, discussing all things Why the Last Man Mm -hmm. with you. Remember, keep watching, keep listening, and most of all, keep Keep surviving. surviving. Bye. Bye.